Hey, everybody, welcome to Ask the Anabolic Doc, starring Dr. Thomas O'Connor, live from Hartford, Connecticut, with his right arm of doom. He is the author of America on Steroids, A Time to Heal. You can get that at either of his websites, anabolicdoc.com or metabolicdoc.com or amazon.com. Very big website, lots of stuff on there. Uh, Dr. O'Connor. You were kind enough to uh, offer to review my blood work because I, I had it done very recently for a physical. And then you had me go back because I was dumb and didn't consult you first. Didn't have them check my CBC. So they took a little more blood on Monday. So uh, how am I looking, Doc? Am I going to be okay? You're very healthy, Ron, but it's very it has the classic trappings <laughs> of a man who's on testosterone. And let's, if you don't mind. Yeah. Let's do it. You're, this is great. You know, you're offering, you're serving yourself up, which I do it too. On a platter. Yep, serving yourself up. And all the fans, all the supporters were blowing up. It's insane. Generation Iron's coming out tomorrow. And it's a great plug for myself and everyone else. And I'm, I have several parts in there. And they they worked on that for a couple, uh, two years. I don't know. I mean, it's gonna, it's a mind blower. It's, it's incredible. But my whole thing is obviously men using androgens from testosterone to full-blown steroids and what it does to the body and not to mention the mind. So with that, with that, Ron, let's, if you don't mind, these are the, and the, Ron, yeah. you did the labs. I had to pick up a piece. You're not dumb, obviously. You're a very brilliant man, but brilliant. The, it's, it's, no one knows this stuff. No one, you know, so Ron Harris, you're, you're an editor of, of a, on, a digital and a magazine. You do that for a living. Yeah. Let me be a doctor. So, what the problem in today is, which we see across the board, is the Google Docs, you know, Google Doctors. And it's, it's a blessing and a curse. It's social media. People have access. And it's good. They want to read. They want to question things. But in the end, oh, my God, we went to med school. We're supposed to be, like, you know, a good housewife. A good housewife. That was a faux pas. I almost said housewife. Ooh, don't say that. Did you notice I caught myself on that, though, Rod? You did. A, a, a good house person, a house frau, a house man, a person that can read and, and go on the internet, they check everything now. And, and the problem is, like those people are salespeople, maybe it's a nurse, maybe it's an editor, a lawyer. I mean, we do it from nine to five, if not all day and all night. So you have to understand, so that's what people, that we, everyone comes into me and we're so, it's so fun. To, some of the stuff people say is true, you're like, okay, my CBC is this, and my reds, and my cholesterol. And then in the end, it's like, okay, so here's what the standards are, and here's where we're going with that, and here's the truth. And a lot of times, it's like you're completely off base, people. You're, you're complete. So these, this is Ron. Let's present, let me present Ron. I'll present a patient, okay. Ronald Harris. Here I am. 49-year-old man who's, Ron, been on testosterone, androgens, and steroids for how many years? On and off since I was 27, mostly on, mostly on. 27, 37, 47, so 22 years. Yeah, it's been a while. So a 49-year-old, this is Ron, you are, by the way, the main man I'm looking for. He's been on for 10 years or more. He's never going to come off at that point. Right. Uh, the other guys I try to keep off. And, then, and forget the top pros and all these incredible things. The, the guys you deal with, Ron, it's incredible, and I'm not putting them down. They're amazing. They're gifted. They're sacrificing not just their 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 time and their training and the pain and suffering. They're sacrificing their lives, Ron. Come on. I know. I know. Come on. They're going to shave off years. Why? Well, it's right here, and I don't think you've done that. But we have to protect you. So, put the thinking caps on. We we every man. This is what I do. So we do a CB. Let me tell you briefly what we do, and you can watch my four part series of how. Doctors should take care of men on steroids or testosterone because half my guys, if not more, they're just on testosterone. Okay. Testosterone has similar effects. It's a dose-dependent effect, right, Ron? Yeah. So the, the, the problems we see with alcohol and most drugs and issues in life are a little bit's okay, but if you do a lot bit and depending on a gallon of vodka per day, you're going to be – that's the problem with these guys. So you're on a little testosterone, and I think I discover maybe some, maybe a little more than just testosterone. Well, right now it's just testosterone. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Why do I oh, say? Actually, that? you know, I should say while I had those labs done, I was on that L, the SARM called LGD. LGD. Ron. Yes. 
Right, that's I got you. I'm I'm a I could. These are like these are like tea leaves. <laughs> well, I was about to. I wanted to make sure you knew I was. Well, hold on. Ron, well, hold, okay. These yeah. are like tea leaves. I read the tea leaves. <laughs> okay. So every man gets a CBC. And please, this is all for education, all for free. CBC, comprehensive blood chemistry, blood panel with red blood cells. Most importantly, red blood cells. That's all that red blood cell stuff and the polycythemia. Ron's got that. Interesting to go over. Ron has a lipid panel. He has a comprehensive metabolic panel, which shows the glucose, and more importantly, the chemistries for your, your, your kidney and your liver. We're going to go over that. And then Ron has the old-fashioned sex hormone binding globin. He has the testosterone levels. Yep. It's going to be great. Total and a free. And he has the PSA, and, he, and someone threw in a, a, a thyroid. Okay, here we go. So there's a lot to go over. First things first, your CBC. Ron, you, you uh, depending on, and you guys, you have to watch the reference values. You got to watch, you got to watch my video. Ron, if you looked at this, and let me, just, Ron, do you mind if I put it up like this? Yeah, that's fine. Does that my home so, address? And so you see the hematocrit? So, so Ron's hematocrit, first of all, your red blood cells are fine, Ron. Okay. But if you just, if, Ron, if you just, if you went to a walk-in clinic, I'm not disparaging. If they just look at the reference range, they're going to say you're on testosterone. We're going to see that in a minute. And your hemoglobin is upper limit normal, 16.6 grams per deciliter. But your hematocrit says high. Oh. Your, your hematocrit. Just a little higher, is, right? So um, your hematocrit's fine. It's 50.1 on this piece of paper. The upper limit normal in, in the world is not 50, it's 52 to 54. Oh, good. We're done. We're done. Now, if you had a hypercoagulable, if you had a past history of a stroke, or you had some genetics for iron overload, liver disease, hereditary hemochromatosis, you got to focus on this, people. The clinical picture is more important than anything. If you had that, you, you'd want to watch this. Now, for this man right here, Ron, do you give blood? Regularly? No, you no. don't. I can tell you don't because I could see the other variables, the MCV. It's tea leaves. This is like reading tea leaves. It, you, you don't learn this overnight, obviously, and this is why you got to be a good internist. Okay, Ron, you don't need to give blood. So many guys are giving blood inappropriately, and it's not. It's a great thing to do because we need the red, we need those red blood cells in our country. But I see a lot of guys they're, they're going to the far side than having too much. They're, they're anemic, and, and it's, I don't know if it's going to – it's not going to lead to death. There's arguments in the community, very cerebral, that it may actually damage your, your bone marrow production if you're chronically draining blood for decades. Now, it, guys are doing that because they think it's they're, – they're serving themselves because they, they're producing too many red blood cells on Yes, steroids. and you guys, you have to check. And if you don't – Ron, Ron doesn't need to do it. Yeah. And, I, and I've seen this is again, I've seen thousands of men. I get very excited. Thousands of men for over ten years, in, in total, almost twenty. But about ten years ago, obviously, because of muscular development, picking up the anabolic doc. Yeah. I, I've been doing this for a full day job. So, so now I live, sleep, eat, and shit it, and I actually never get bored. Four in the morning, or never, because I love it. I never get bored. Every man, every new lab value is new. It's and and you see some predictable things. And then you see some things that are outside predictability, and you have to figure it out. So, Ron, your your bone this is bone marrow function. What your bone marrow is doing, it's 100% predictable. And your hemoglobin's fine. This is why you, if you're walking fast or running or jogging, which I know we don't do, or biking, you're going to feel great. Without men on testosterone, this is a great reason to do testosterone because when you get older, and, and this is true. Again, I'm not a guy supporting unclaimed evidence-based medical this supports when men get older they're normal and their red cells go down i'm talking older older mm. this is one reason why it's good actually if you're to, if it's appropriate to to take testosterone mm. oh i'm supported i'm support fully conservatively supported by doctors but you don't do it just for i want my red cells to be high i mean lance armstrong did it for that reason pretty much only right <laughs> Increase in oxygen carrying capacity. Ron, let's move on. Okay. That's the CBC. You don't need to. Get, so if you're my patient, I'd say, hey, buddy, you're you're okay, Doc. It said hi. Now, guys, people, 
Ron, okay. guys get so nervous. They read this, they panic, they, it's high, they Google it. That's my beginning of my discussion. They talk to their wife, maybe their husband, maybe their, they have a partner. They, they freak out. This is why I, I manage my men. And when you're a doctor and you're prescribing a, any medicine, including androgen, you have to be responsible for, for not making them suffer, even over a night or a weekend. So there's no, this is normal. You're normal. And, and I'm, I'm a son of a bitch now. Any doctor that says it's not normal is going to embarrass himself. This is completely normal. You're upper limit normal, and there's no danger on that. Done. Next one. Done. Next one. Next page is, is the lipid panel. Let's start off with it. Classic. Your total cholesterol is 135. Your HDL is low at 28. Your triglycerides are normal because you're 69. It's actually way under 100, 150. You have no metabolic syndrome. Your gut is lean. There's not much fat in there. You have good genetics. You don't have a, a genetic gene thing for this. And you're not a guy eating too many calories nor carbohydrates. And your LDL, because I know your history, you're on a little baby dose of a statin drug, Ron. Yes. And your LDL, I remember from a year ago, was much higher. Ron, this is a great picture except for one thing. Tell me what's wrong with that picture. Uh, out of range, 28. I, I'm, part of my screen is blocked, so I can't see it. But looks like uh, something is, I don't know, help me out here because I, I can't read that well. <laughs> HD, I'm busting your stones. Oh, yeah. So this is, Ron, these labs, when you said, hey, Doc, let's do my lab thing online, and I was like, I, let me see those labs. I said, shit, this is an exact, this is like piece per piece, the exact pieces that are so important for a man who's 49, 50, from 35 to 75, that's healthy, that's on antigen. This is what you see. You, you're, you're on this paper, you're kind of like, it's like the average bear. But, but it's, it's variable. Now, you're, you're a man, you're a big man. You have a little bit of plaque in your artery, Ron. We want to stabilize that. So what? We'll get, don't drink, don't smoke, exercise, eat good food. The diet is out the window now. Now some doctors say take more fat. Everyone's going to agree to keep the sugar down. But some doctors in the American Heart Association guys are still fighting over cutting down all those fats. Other doctors are saying, fooey on you. The, the fats are not a big deal. It's the sugars completely. Right. And it could be, it could be Atkins or keto. Well, nothing more to say. Okay. Now, you're not a diabetic, and we're going to go over those levels here in a little bit. Okay. But the truth is, you're, you have a nice, your LDL now is underneath 100. We want it there, at least there. Uh, the data is looking forward. You know I'm an expert in the cardiac protection stuff. Right. That for men, obviously, on steroids because it's going to hurt their heart. Hello, it's what I focus on. It's a great bang for the buck. Yeah. I want to see LDLs at least where yours is, if not to mention, and we'll get, you got time, you're cool, even taking your LDL lower and lower, with or without medicines. You're on a little dose of a statin. It's working great. You know what's interesting? Because of your genes, because you're a man, and because you're on testosterone, and because you're on the, the SARM, your HDL is low, though, bro, 28. What's it supposed to be? It should be well over 40. The higher it is, the better, even over 50. Okay. So, hold on. Buddy, what are you doing? That's my kid. Okay, okay. I just have to, that's a real life story. I got a kid, 12 year old back there. Buddy, go do your thing. So, okay, Ron, yeah. you need, so testosterone will lower LDL for a lot of guys because they get in good shape. They burn, they burn the belly fat off, forget the diabetes, the genetics. And then, but the problem with testosterone and taking too much dose dependently, yeah. it takes down the HDL with it. Mm. That, that, it, it depend, if the man has coronary artery risks, Bad family history, he's getting older, hypertension, bad cholesterol. This is this overall, Ron, based on the experts out there, these are called Framingham risks. They're just going to put you at an increased risk for, for, going, for, for clogging up the artery further and further. It's called plaque progression. So I, I would say to you, buddy, stay in the lowest dose of testosterone you can and, 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 and don't do the added oral agents. But I do love you. That's what I would say. Okay. But, and I do understand it. And we don't know, fooey on you, it's not going to progress mine. Don't you want every variable you can to be perfect? I, I do. I, I, so, you know, if you look at the testosterone levels, that's the next page, I guess. Maybe I could take the dose down a little bit and still be doing fine. You know. So, Ron, with that, let's go. Why is Ron 
I'll bet you off testosterone, but you would feel like garbage. Yeah. And your native, your natural baseline for HDL is double what it is right in front of me. Oh, but hold sure. on, we, this is the stuff, Ron, we don't know. I don't know how much weight does that have uh, in your whole big picture for producing your clot, your, your plaque. No one knows. Man, not good. Getting older, not going to do about it. Family history, not bad, right? You have a pretty good family history for heart disease? Well, yeah, my dad had it, but that's uh, cancer is what got him. But but your dad had had early pre. Your dad had heart disease. He did. He was in his fifties when he when he uh, was diagnosed, and uh, he did eat a lot of salt and pretty much. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Meat. That's still very young. Yeah. That's still very young, though. See, so you you're a man. Yeah. Bad. That's a risk. These are all classic risks for heart disease. Man, bad. Yeah. Over forty, bad. Boom. You have premature heart disease genetically. Ron, I did two history and physicals today. Both of the men, they, 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 their dads are in their 70s, and they drink and they smoke, and they smoke, and they have not, their heart's fine. Hmm. That, this is genetics. So you're saying so, I should drink and smoke more. That's beautiful, Ron. I do love that. So, Ron, so, and again, you do have to, you do, I agree, even though the Framingham guys, they, they, don't, they don't put, a, they don't specify this, but it is true, like, okay, my dad had heart disease in his 50s or 60s, uh, maybe 40s, but my dad smoked and drank and ate salt and ate food. And, but, but you know the argument to that is, and this is all from the American College of Cardiology guys, you know, if you sit around in the 70s and 80s or 60s to 80s when the dads are at, at a time, there, there was the next, there was your, your uncle or your buddy who he smoked the Lucky Strikes and had a few beers and he had a steak also and he didn't have a heart attack yet. Mm, yeah. So, so please, there is... There, there is in some families, real true family, family history now is crucial for clinicians to ask about and to tailor this. But Ron, we went out and did a, you, Ron, you, you're a VIP, right? You're getting the VIP, you're getting the antibiotic docs VIP treat. We did a calcium score. We did a calcium score. So looking at these numbers, looking at this cholesterol number, it's a number on paper. The American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association last week, two weeks ago said, Game on for looking at people that have moderate risks for using coronary artery calcium scoring. Game on. Hmm. I, I knew they were going to do it years ago, but they have to be careful. They're very conservative, and they need to have evidence. No doctor can argue. So if we look at these numbers on paper, fooey on you. I've had bad cholesterol for years, this guy says, and this guy says, and this guy. And I, my arteries are fine, but then he has a heart attack. Okay. So no one could argue, am I right or wrong? Yeah. No, no one could argue. So we look in your arteries and we find indeed a little bit of plaque. Your plaque now is stabilized and certainly slowed down just because you're on a statin. Yeah. Now, I don't like statins for the muscle breakdown. I tore off freaking everything off my body. So I'm on a PCSK9 drug, a lower dose of statin. We're not gonna talk about it. Okay. You're on that low dose of statin. You're, Ron, you're, let's talk about why your HDL is low in part from your genetics, you're a man, your, your body size, your diet. Your testosterone, Ron, is 1,642. Oh, yeah, baby. Sounds good, right? Oh, it's, it's elevated. I'm just saying. Oh, and, yeah, but your time. brain, how does your brain feel? Feels fine. I mean, I know guys who have tested at 10,000. Ron, I, I've seen, we, you know, we have we, 10,000. I've seen 30,000. Wow. Dallas Harbor, supposedly 55,000. Wow. But anyway, and Ron, your free testosterone, this is the talking point, is 564.8. Their upper limit normal is 155. Yeah. I don't want to be normal. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. So the amazing piece is an ester of androgen overloads the sex hormone binding globin, lowers it, and then it all becomes, a lot of it is free, and it's going into your brain, and it goes into the skeletal muscle, and this is the effect of super physiologic androgen. Yeah. You get your so, and <laughs> Ron, I do, I do love you. Let's keep moving on. Let's keep moving on. So sex hormone binding, this is bro science. Yeah. Sex hormone binding globin with a man on androgens, both intermuscular injected esters and you don't know if you're really getting a SARM, but maybe you are. Yeah. What what happened to the sex hormone binding glob? Uh, it's not on there, or it is on there. Okay. I'm just busting your balls. Oh, I thought it was normal. It was normal range, wasn't it? No, it's no. This, it's just per run. This is why it's so beautiful. This is predictable. Your sex hormone binding globin is going to be driven 
downward. Oh. And that's what anabolic steroids do. They drop. We don't know why. And I love all the douchebag guys. I love all the bro science guys. Because, buddy, if I don't know, you definitely don't know. Llewellyn doesn't know. <laughs> the guys over in Russia don't know. The Russians. I talk. It, 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 we actually do know because it, it, it drives down mechanisms and and productive proteins in the liver, and it, this has nothing to do with your liver is fine, by the way. Oh, right. Your liver is 100% fine. I can support that with what's what I'm going to show in a minute. But your liver is is your elevate your liver enzymes are elevated, but your function in your liver is normal. Okay. And let, so let's go into that. Sexually binding globin is low, so therefore that therefore your total testosterone would theoretically be altered lower, but your free would be higher because it's, it has less to hold on to. Right. So it's really, really cool. It's just really, really cool. So you have that. Now, liver ends up, okay, Ron, your liver is, is not toxic. Your liver is normal, okay. but, but your liver enzymes are, are slightly elevated, your transaminases, and that's not not from the androgen from testosterone. That's from that's why I, I had the crystal ball. That's an effect from an oral agent. Mm, yeah. and, and, and 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 so you wanted to do this, Ron. So yeah, absolutely. That's the SARM. Or we think it's the SARM. That's one hundred percent the SARM. Now, my argument is, first of all, based on the literature, he did that, that your guy there at Harvard, Bashane, he did a study. He bought ten SARMs. Five of them turned out to be buckish, the other five were 25 percent were real SARMs. Okay, maybe I so, got so, 25. So, 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 you know what? This this is either an, a high level SARM, which could be a real SARM, because you're taking a high level of what's it's a higher level, so it's acting like a, like an oral anabolic steroid. Yeah. So, so that's the whole argument. Is so it's is are SARMs really? Why would you need SARM? Why would you need? This is why, in the end of the day, it's probably just safer. And I, I didn't say this. To just do very low dose steroids, just be careful and just do testosterone if you if you want some of these. That's up to people, but I mean, and get monitored. But right. but SARMs is this, why would you do a SARM and the SARM shouldn't have these effects? But what is it doing? It's wrecking your HDL and it's elevating your liver enzymes. Damn it! I knew it. So, but it, Ron, I mean, you know, I get excited for this stuff. You're, and then when you come off, we reach. So I would reach. I'd say, sir, come on off. Let's modify the testosterone. Let's keep watching you. Watch your blood pressure, and let's repeat in a few weeks, and you'd see your liver enzymes go back completely to normal. Because I remember last year, your LFTs were completely normal. They were not elevated. Right. There wasn't anything, no oral agents at that time. So, so this is all predictable, but your bilirubin, your bilirubin, which would be the red, which would be the icterus and the yellowing jaundice, your, is, is normal. And I don't want to give a false sense of security, but the liver is really amazingly massive and it can tolerate so much and in the end you, I've seen liver issues and so on and so forth we all have Dallas McCarver's liver was what three times enlarged yeah. he just oh, poor guy was just a shit show but the truth is you, you your liver is fine it's it's the subtleties of the heart and the kidney that's the subtle over years and years and years and it's the plaque and it's you have a little bit of LVH right yeah yeah it's okay. the you, you, so that so you watch the blood pressure. You're on blood pressure medicine, correct? No, no, no. no, no. I'm on that statin. That's it. My blood pressure always I, I, tests. It tested out fine every time. It always does. okay. So 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 then so you're okay then. So I just you see most guys. You got to watch the blood pressure and the it's cholesterol and blood pressure. Okay. I mean, there's really no, none of the guys like you become in diabetic or pre-diabetic, but but regular people do, Ron. Regular. Regular people that are not fitness people, they they they're pre-diabetic and type two diabetic because they're just regular people. So we got that sexually binding globin. Last one, Ron. Your P. Your someone did a again. I'm not saying they did the wrong thing, but they did an inappropriate. They did a, a very detailed PSA with a free PSA. They did a very advanced free and total PSA. Should not be done for a man that we're not trying to look at your PSA that's under four, you're a normal man. And there's even data to say we have to be careful with standard PSA. Your PSA, Ron, thank God, is 2.1. This is prostate-specific antigen screening for prostate cancer. Yeah. Now, this shows your percent free. See that? Yeah. Your percent free is low. Now, that, that's only people are going to look at that, read into it, and say, oh, my God, 
Do I have a risk for prostate cancer? Yeah. This is only it, the, the meaningfulness of this specific test is only meaningful if you're looking at a PSA over four. Uh, and even let, over let me ask you this now the standard manual test where they stick their finger up your uh, gazoo is that any more or less reliable than these PSA oh my god markers? it has nothing to do with it Ron nothing to it's a whole separate test oh geez but but it's the digital rectal examination is still standard of care for men that you're screening for prostate cancer even though it, the data has shown that it's really never saved lives and really hasn't really done much but you have to it's all we have we have PSAs. I can go on for an hour and a half on this because the American Urological Society, not to mention Europeans, the Preventive Task Force Society, that they're arguing each other on the value and meaningfulness and protection of this. I use it. You better use it. If you have a doctor that knows how to do it, not to scare and not to get false positives and have men getting biopsies, transrectal biopsies, I see four or five a month. I take care of hundreds of men, though. And a lot of the guys I take care of, primary care, I still have some left. They're not on testosterone. Their PSAs go up. We check the digital rectal exam. It's usually inconclusive, mostly, obviously, because it's, it's prostate cancer detectable. You're not going to pick it up with your finger. That's when it's advanced. And no one's going to argue me on that. We use, how we, we look at PSA. We need to have better modalities of detection, like mammography for women. We just, I think because we're men and we're useless and we don't say anything, we, there's been no resources into it. I mean, would, would like an MRI pick something like that up? Absolutely. Hmm. But they only use MRI. Now, I'm involved right now with probably half a dozen guys that may have prostate cancer because I detected an elevated PSA. Of course, I did a digital rectal examination and I've only, I've, I've never detected prostate cancer after 15 years as a primary care doctor with that finger. I've detected all my prostate cancers with this. Now, they shouldn't have done a total on a free. It's inappropriate. But so it looks like you, you, if you look at this, you, you, your free is percent low, and that's going to be a, that's going to be worrisome. But, but if you just read this from Googling, you're going to be a wreck. But if you really read it, you're going to see that, oh, that's only if my PSA is between 2.6 and 4 or over 4.1 to 10. Your, your PSA here, 2.1. So this goes zero to 2.5. It doesn't even relate. And then it goes 2.6 to 4.0 and 4.1 to 10. And again, me as an internist where I'm a screening expert, I'm an expert in screening. Of course, I'm an expert in steroids and prevention for heart disease, blood pressure, cholesterol, and sugar because I'm an internist. I don't touch this with a 10-foot pole. Wow. I know when to refer and when not to refer. People pay me as a manager. I'm really just a manager. Some things I directly do, but a good clinician knows his or her line in the sand mm -hmm. and not, but to, to lead that person and, to, and to, man, to manage. So this was your PSA is 2.1. Now, your, your total PSA is meaningful, 2.1. You, you just need to watch that from year to year, buddy. That's all. But the data, the data, that's good, Ron. It's good. But the data shows us this. Men on testosterone appear to be protected from having prostate cancer. How do you like that? Wow, okay. Prostate, it's, called, it's called testosterone saturation. Wow. Abraham Morgenthauer over there at Harvard. A lot of stuff going on over Harvard. Abraham's my, my, my guy, man. I love Abraham. Oh, that's your guy. So, yeah, so, he's my, he's so, my doctor. So, Ron, we did, I think... So let me wrap it up. CBC, Ron, is normal. Red cells are upper limit normal. You're on androgen. Just keep watching it. Oh, uh, your sexual and body globin, your PSA, we talked about. Your, your lipid level, cholesterol, we talked about the low HDL. Your, eight, your glucose is in the 80s. Your sugar is perfect. Your kidney and your liver is fine, but your transaminases are elevated because you're on a oral agent. LGD, 440 or 44. It's got some number after the LGD. I'm done, Ron. That's, so I would okay. say, sir, let me keep prescribing. I would have to modulate the testosterone. I would have to say, did you go to the lab too early? What are you on? What are you supplementing? I would give you a hug. I'd leave you, give you some love. And then I'd say, you know, let's just repeat maybe the comprehensive metabolic panel in, in another month or so to make sure those, those, those transaminases come down. And if they don't, Ron, I, I try to find things that are common. And then if they don't, and we're both concerned, I refer to a hepatologist. 
Okay. And that's not a that, that's not a snake expert. That's a liver expert. That's a, it's a herpetologist you're thinking of. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I just try to fill my jokes in. So Ron, you're a healthy guy, buddy. You're doing really well. Awesome. Right. Okay, let's transition. Trans being the key word. You like that? Uh, so there was an article in the New York Times. I think it was the New York Times, right? About yes. uh, a documentary called Man Made that's actually won some awards uh, at different film festivals. It's about transgender bodybuilding competition and, you know, the, the people involved in it. And it was really interesting to look at some of these. It's mostly female to male, which I find, I always thought if, you know, if you're going to be a bodybuilder and, and be a transgender bodybuilder, the the way to go would be male to female because you'd have a massive advantage because you're a man. And, you know, even if you're taking some estrogen or something, you'd still probably be bigger and more muscular than uh, the women you compete against. But this is uh, it featured mostly uh, the pictures and the people they were talking to in the article were female to male. And, uh, I, I think you've seen some pictures of them, and they're yeah. pretty. Uh, I'm really shocked. Some of them look. You know, some of them, I wish I had like arms like some of these women or men or I get confused. I don't know which pronouns to use, but let's, I guess they're, they're, uh, they're men now. So we say he and male men. They're men. Yeah. They're, they're considered men, I think now. So this is obviously they're, they're utilizing hormone therapy to, to make these transitions. And that's going to be much, much more common as the years go by now, because the transgender movement is just been blowing up now it's you know the, the government has to recognize uh their rights and their needs and uh, a lot of people feel they were born one gender and they're gonna they want to be a different gender uh there's also a great documentary uh called transformer which is not about the robots it's called transformer you might know about this guy because he was a world champion powerlifter uh matt cross Kroxileski. i know him, i know him well matt crock he was actually a training partner brand well. for a while yeah, do, I know him personally. You know him personally. So, Matt, of course, of course. big, massive guy, massive, strong, and uh, he's always felt he was a woman. And um, I saw the trailer. I didn't. It was on demand. I didn't want to pay the six bucks, seven bucks to watch it because I'm cheap. But uh, it doesn't seem like he's doing anything to physically become a woman in terms of hormones or breast implants or anything like that. He has a wig and puts makeup on, and he has like you know padded bra. Uh, so he. He dresses uh, or presents himself. I, I don't know all the prop. Everyone out there, please forgive me if I'm not being politically correct with all my crazy I terminology, because I, I know it's always very it's a sensitive issue. But he doesn't seem to be Matt doesn't seem to be doing his actual name. He goes by uh, Janae, Janae Marie Croc. Now is is the name he likes to be uh, referred to. He's not doing anything hormonally to to trans to uh, transition. But this article in that documentary, Man Made, is all about uh, women who have had their breasts removed. They call it top surgery. And they're on testosterone. And they're living as men. And some of them are getting into bodybuilding. And it was, uh, there's a, the competition is called the TransFit Con. I guess it's been going on for a few years. And, uh, you know, the, I, some of the competitors look pretty good. I mean, they would do pretty well in any any contest whether they were up there with uh, just regular men or not you know some of them not so much but i think it's more about empowerment they just want to get up there and you know prove that they could do it not necessarily all of them trying to turn pro or anything like that but uh what are your thoughts are you, are you starting to hear more about this starting to see more well, going on with I, this whole movement i've dealt with it you know, over the years ron I've, I've actually had a bunch of patients maybe half a dozen uh, not so many i guess and it's and the, they're all women to men that's right so they and as far as the, the, you know, the psyche and stuff, I mean, they feel, legitimately feel like they're kind of trapped in, you know, they just, they just associate. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist either, so it, it is very interesting where this whole thing lies and where the gender identity and how we're going to be careful with children and how we're going to, you know, let them express themselves at the same time, not to kind of push them into it. And there's a lot of trending things, and but it's, we're Americans and it's great. So we have to respect each other and we have to, you know, we have to kind of, uh, the same token, you know, I think most people don't feel comfortable that if you have an opposite sex person pushing into the bathroom with your child, regardless if it's a male or female. So th th we're going to be going back and forth on this for years, I think. In the end, it's common sense, like me and you. I mean, you, they can, you could pretty much, my pit, I mean, you could do what you like to do for yourself, but you, let's try to keep it off like any everyone else's plate 
you know, so the the bodybuilding thing, like I said, I'd be more upset if I was a body if I was a a woman, and someone on that stage with me had been born a man, and they're competing against me who is a woman. Like uh, this Fallon Fox is a big controversy now in the UFC. Uh, oh, born, yeah. a, born a man and now fighting as a woman, and he I'm sorry she she cracked someone's skull in a fight. That's how strong she is because she still. Has all the the heavier muscle, heavier bone. She's density. developed as a man. She's right. she was developed as a man. Yeah. So but I, I, I I think you know. So you asked a question, but I mean, just my, the personal feelings come out for everyone, and I definitely want to respect everyone. I, I have a strong component of, of gay men in my practice, and I, I actually have no no trans no transgender people at this time. But I've 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 consulted on a number over the years, and. I've just found that most of them are, are just kind of conflicted. That's just my own yeah. professional opinion. N not disparaging. They're just conflicted. I mean, give me just an old-fashioned great guy who's gay. I, that's a great guy. I, that's that's. There's nothing wrong with that. You, I mean, well, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong. Let me ask you this: You you treat it's a men it's a men's only practice. You I have men. I have tons of gay men. Tons. Right. But you wouldn't. Would you treat, or would you be qualified to treat? Uh. uh biological woman who would transition so, into a man with hormones and maybe some surgery? So let's go into that because because I've, I've, I've consulted on them but I've never tr I've never prescribed testosterone to a biologic woman who's a transgender or transitioning to a man. Now they've come to my care with their own medicine from psychiatrists, mainly psychiatrists, that's where they're getting it from. Testosterone? Or primary, yeah, testosterone. Wow. Okay, wow. And, and, and they come to me because I'm the testosterone expert in the world. So they're, they're worried about, these are women that now they're HDL, they're, everything I just did about you, Ron, everything, I, my whole spiel about Ron Harris, hmm. imagine that spiel, you don't change your genetics. The X and the Y chromosome, you're not going to change that. So is this a woman, this is now going to be a biologic woman who's on androgens. So again, apart from the physical hair loss and the change in the voice and the sex, the secondary sex characteristic changes, the, the, androgen, the, the androgen side of the androgen anabolic steroid, which they want, you're going to have effects on, again, the endothelial organs, the inner wrapping of the artery, the, the blood pressure, because the, they're not designed biologically to have that. So no one's going to argue me. They, they, they all... I believe we're satisfied with my with my overview and my consultation. My says for how I said, and based on their family history, based on their physical exam and their vital signs and everything else, I made recommendations so they wouldn't have heart or kidney disease. Now these are women, so they have no prostates. Mm. There's, there's no PSA, so it, it requires a very a, a tactful approach. But my opinion is that that. I don't, it's being forced, I think, on a lot of people, and I don't know if it's really, and they, these people have told me this subsequently, that they, 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 they've regretted and they've backed off on it. Hmm. Wow. So I think this is, in the New Yorker magazine, it was the New Yorker, I think, it is, again, I, I'm, I'm going to say what it is. Again, I'm, I'm politically in the center. I mean, I have to be, obviously. People, people, my friends and my people know how I really feel and what my love is. It, it, politically, but I'll leave it out of this because it's not a venue to have it come out, especially with this stuff. Right. So, but when it comes down to it, those media, and when I read the article, it's it, it's reading, it's so highfalutin, and it's, I don't even understand what it's saying, and I'm a pretty well-educated guy. I don't consider myself the best reader in the world, but I don't even, what are they saying? It's showing off, and it just doesn't mix well to me. It, it's, it's so pushed and so contrived it, it, again, if they want to do it, that's great. It's a show. They're doing it for a show. You can see the surgical marks. Yeah, you, they, they've had surgery. It's amazing. But I do. I respect that if that's what you want to do, and it's an art that for them, Ron. It's it's an it's a living human cultural art form. So let me. Ask, I'm curious. So because women aren't born with much testosterone naturally being produced, is it more dangerous overall? For a woman, I guess this could apply to just a, wow. you know, any woman who uses testosterone. But these people who are transitioning, they have to be on it just like a just like a man on TRT. They have to be on testosterone. But they're on super forever. physiologic doses. Yeah. 
is it, is it more dangerous for a woman internally? We, Ron, we, they asked me that. That's why they came to me. Yeah. It, quite, the, the, the deal, the data, we have no idea. Mm, yeah. I so it it's, it's like, but a, a common, okay, no one's going to argue except for the rare, rare hermaphrodite, and that's a real, true existence, yeah. is you, you're biologically a woman or a man. You've, you've been produced. Forget about the spiritualism and the religion. Jesus, who gives a shit about that for this talk? Right. The, reli the truth is you're produced. You're, you're a human being. You have an X or a Y chrome. You're a man or a, or a woman. You, in, your, in utero, the, because of that gene expression, you've been, you've been masculinized. And if they, when they do an ultrasound, what is it, 16 weeks? You'll see a little pe penis or not. Oh, do you know the sex of the baby? Oh, it's a boy. Why do you think that is? Because because of the genes, you had an increase in a DHT and you had different types of an antigens and it, it, it changed the body. It changed that, that male fetus or female fetus with, with certain brain behavior. That's why boys are not on testosterone, but they're more f aggressive than women. There's certain behavior. No one can, no one can, this is science, no one can, there's certain behavior characteristics, no one can, boys and women, and I'm not, I'm not characterizing people, no, this is science, yeah. so you have that, that's, that's been inborn and ingrained, and that's a bi biologic state, not to mention, you, you don't have a prostate, you, you, you don't have testicles, you have ovaries, you have the, the phallus and the clitoris versus the, you have all these analogs, now, put them on androgens that's secondary male sex characteristics but then you're right and that, that's and that's what that's what you get but then put a, a woman's a genetically biologic woman expressed her endothelial wrapping of her coronary artery her myocardial development for her left ventricle and her kidney put that on super physiologic androgen for her it won't be super physiologic for you because you're, you're a male so the ranges are different. The ranges are different. The ranges for a CBC for for the ranges for a woman for a CBC are different because of androgen and red blood cells, right? Yeah. It, it comes, so, so now she's going to be polycythemic oh, as to a to a banshee. No, hold up. She's going to be polycythemic to a banshee as a banshee. She's going to be way up. Is that Ron's trying to think about a banshee in polycythemic? Banshee, that's some creature from mythology. I, I mean, this is like I'm 54, so I have these old statements as you know, like to a banshee. Okay. It just means it means a lot, right? Oh, okay, so, okay. Come on, Ron, that's great I, stuff. I, I didn't that's hear, I never heard that. One. Movies. Ron, that person is going to be way up. Oh, so you change your sex because that's what you want to do. Again, that's God bless you. You want to. You're taking androgens. Are you going to now argue the reference ranges? Are you going to flip? And when you go into the lab, do you say, take that female off, make it a male, and now your red blood cells are okay because your hematocrit's 54%. Now, the question for that is, if you talk to a conservative practitioner, they're going to say, I'm not dealing with this. You're going to get hurt. Right, right. We have no data. And again, we should get data. We need to open up our brains and our minds and our clinics. We have no medical data outcome you know like like years of look you know retrospective and perspective we just have none of this okay so don't, don't. i think i think physiologically it's going to be a problem because the male again but we have no doubt i just think my hunch is that the male body is designed for, to have a higher level of androgen naturally yeah. And, and you work within those means and that's what i do within my clinic right i can bring a guy up to his normal high level when he's 25, most men feel phenomenal. You have to manage, again, the heart, the prostate, and all this. You're going to do it for a woman because she says she's a man. The levels are going to be up. If you adopt the, the, new male, the new male reference levels, I mean, you could adopt wherever you like, but is that going to cause over decades physiological injury to, to this person? Probably. I think it probably will. Interesting. Well, I guess, you know. This is because it's such a new thing, and like you said, we don't have, we don't have studies. We don't have a lot of subjects, really. You know, these people. It's all really happening over the last. I want to say it's been booming over the last five, ten years. Absolutely. Where it was really, really rare to hear about people transitioning, even ten years ago. Now it's you hear it constantly. Absolutely. It's it's just part of the media for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. 
Yeah, I, I don't know if it's happening a lot more, if it's just being publicized a lot more. You, you can't. True. It's hard to say. True. Okay, well, this has been a crazy episode, Doctor. <laughs> I'm exhausted, Ron. Another crazy shenanigans filled episode with Dr. O'Connor. Wow. I, I very much appreciate you personally looking over my labs and putting my mind at ease for the most part. I'll I finish off my uh, SARM. I got one little tiny bit in the in the bottle tomorrow. I'll suck it out with an eyedropper and then But Ron, did it help you? Who knows? <laughs> oh my God. You did know, you get stronger? Uh, I don't get strong. No, it's, no, I can't say that. No. You look great. <laughs> I, think, I can say that uh, I look, I, I just go by the mirror and uh, the scale to a little, to a, a very much lesser extent. I would say it's the same result I would get if I had been stacking a couple other things with tests, a couple other steroids. Wow. wow. So, and that, that's all I really expected out of it. I didn't expect anything miraculous. Uh, I was taking a small dose. Uh, uh, half an ml of this LGD thing. Uh, I couldn't tell you the, the dosage, but it was it was what it said to use on the bottle. Which did I you like. feel good though? Did you libido and your mood? You're you're not snappy. you no no changes for mood and libido or no? Didn't turn into any more of a jerk than I already am. So wow, <laughs> I maintained a constant level of being an a hole. Very <laughs> interesting, man. Very interesting subject. Yeah. So okay. Well, we'll be back next week with who knows what we're we'll talking about next week. I'm sure it'll be fascinating. It's always yeah, good. We, we always find good, cool stuff to talk about. And uh, I appreciate you. You, a lot of times, if people don't realize this, you you give me topics most of the time. It's it's uh, things that have caught your attention that uh, that you want to discuss and turns out to be very good discussions. So I always appreciate it. I do that. love it, Ron. I appreciate you guys and, and Steve Blackman for giving me the platform because, you know, the more I get out there, the more I'm humble because we're well, just great, man. Just, you know, we're taking over the world with the anabolic doc, metabolic doc, and – Ah, oh, I just, I just love. I got it. some breaking news for you, though. Starting the February issue of MD, we're going to have the anabolic doc and Doctor Testosterone, <laughs> all the way from Greece. Doctor George Tuliados. That's right. I love. I'm so happy to hear that. George yeah. is great. There's only two anabolic docs in the whole goddamn world, Man, and I dubbed him. him to be the other anabolic. He is. And MD is going to have them both. How awesome is that? The guy's a goddamn savant. Okay. He is. He is. He's. He's. He's a great. He, he sends me messages all the time on Instagram. He sends me like picture of Dorian Yates or Ronnie Coleman. He's really he's a true bodybuilder, true meathead. He really he's a good looking guy. I mean, the guy's got a he's a good looking guy, good looking bo good body. Yeah, but I mean, he's he's one he's one of us for sure. He's a meathead. Absolutely is. <laughs> all right, doctor. Thank you so much for another great show, everybody. Go to his websites, metabolic doc and dot com and anabolic doc dot com. Go to YouTube, check out his videos. Just search anabolic doc. All his stuff comes up. He's got some excellent content on there. And if you don't have the book, there's still time for Christmas. Hanukkah, whatever you, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, you got to get someone to get for. America on steroids, a time to heal. You can get it at his websites or Amazon.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Ask the Anabolic Doc. We'll see you next time.